What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today, we're back with another one of my old school hoopties that I got for almost nothing, a 1995 Chevrolet Cavalier Coupe. If you buy a new Cavalier today, we wouldn't be surprised if by the time it's scheduled for a tune-up, you've already got it paid off. If by the time it needs new rear shocks, you have your master's degree. If by the time it needs a transmission fluid change, your baby is in first grade. Or if by the time it needs a new muffler, We've elected two presidents. Any car can be easy to buy. The new Cavalier is easy to own. That's what makes it a genuine Chevrolet. If you were to make a list of the safest towns in America, at the top of that list would be Eau Claire, Wisconsin. If you were to make a list of cars with the most standard safety features for the money, at the top of that list would be the Chevy Cavalier. So if you lived in Eau Claire and you drove a Cavalier, would that make you one of the safest people in America? Probably not, but it's a good start. Nice car. You too. How do you like your Cavalier? I love it. Do you mind if I ask what you paid? We're on 11000 Me too. Does the two-door have dual airbags and anti-lock brakes? Yeah, it just makes me feel safer. Me too. <laughs> I see you got the four-door. I needed more room for the lady with the red hair. Lady with the red hair. And say hello to man in blue tie. <laughs> the two-door and four-door Chevy Cavalier. Yours for just over $11,000. So here it is, fresh from insurance auto auctions. I got this car for $425, guys. Unfortunately, transporting it cost me an additional $1,356. I am into this car total, this is insane, for $2,350.69. I know, I know, this is from Long Island. And I know what you're thinking, it's gonna be a rust bucket. Actually, I've already walked around this car, checked it out. I don't see any rust anywhere on this car. The best part is it's a charitable adult rides vehicle, which means whether the car is a rust bucket, a piece of crap, or a great running and driving car, the money went to charity, and that's always a good thing. 114,000 miles, supposed to be a run and drive. We have a key fob here. Oh. When's the last time you, it sounds like the old, who is this? Made in USA, you know it's old. This alarm system is old because it was made right here in America. I got the Carfax report right here. We're gonna look it over just real quick. 95 Cavalier Coupe 2.2 liter Carfax, one owner certified with 23 service records. No accidents, clean, or sorry, accident, 8-6 of 1997. So one accident, clean title, not salvage. We have, Records dating back to 20 miles back in September of 1995. 30, 39,000 miles in 1998 had an inspection. Great. You have a safety inspection performed, rear brake suggested, emissions at 49,000 miles in 99. It failed. <laughs> Typical Chevy for you, right? In 99, it had a 30,000 mile service performed. 99 again at 49,000 miles, it passed an inspection, it passed another inspection at 59,000 miles, and then in 2000, recommended maintenance performed, four tires mounted, tires balanced, four tires replaced, battery replaced, emissions inspection performed. In 2001, 64,000 miles, oil and filter changed, emissions inspection performed. Then another inspection, Registration. Looks like we had a little work done here. In 2002, body electrical system checked, front brake pads replaced, rotors resurfaced, rear brake service adjustment, oil and filter change, engine wiring harness repaired, emissions inspection performed. 72,000 miles, another inspection. Then in 03, at a Chevy dealership, recommended maintenance performed, drive belts checked, fluids checked, emissions inspection performed. Lots of this. Let's get down here to Hus Husted, Husted Chevrolet. 2004, uh, starter replaced, titled inspection, oil and filter change, 86,000, then oil and filter change, dry belts replaced, another inspection, another inspection, starter replaced again in 04, 86,000 miles, tail light bulb replaced, fuel filter replaced, spark plugs replaced, oil and filter changed. This is in 05, guys. So in 04, it had 86,000 miles on it, and here we are almost a year later. It doesn't say the mileage, but Definitely had a tune-up and stuff done to it. Moving on, let's see anything else we got interesting here. Ah, 06, spark plugs and fuel filter again. Then another inspection, 
oil and filter changed, past emissions, oil and filter changed, front brake pads replaced, brake rotors replaced, rear brake shoes replaced, brake drums resurfaced, and an inspection that was in 09. Thank you! That was in 2009 with 98,000 miles. This car only has 114,000. It tells you it's been parked a while. All right, 98,000 miles. Emissions, title, emissions, 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 emissions. Then at 102,000 miles in 2012, power steering hose, power steering fluid change, oil and filter. 103,000 miles in 2013. Boy, this thing was just not driven at all. Four wheel alignment, oil and filter, power steering fluid flushed again. Boy, they really... They really took this person for a ride, didn't they? Um, oil and filter changed 104,000 miles, 105,000 miles, power steering fluid flushed again. It's, it should have very clean power steering fluid. Battery serviced at 106,000 miles in 2017. Emissions, registrations, emissions, emissions, it just dropped off is what happened. So somewhere around 2017 at 107,000 miles, it looks like it just really didn't get driven anymore. By 2018, 108,000 miles. 2020, 110,000. 2021, 111. 2022, 112. 2023, 113,000 miles. See what I mean? This thing just, it just sat. And then in 2024, which is when I bought it, September 11th, it became mine. This baby belongs to me. I'm gonna put this under the windshield wiper here so it doesn't, doesn't get lost. But we have a working key fob, which means we have a working battery. Tires look to be in good shape. Are these Michelins? They are. They are Michelins. DOT is 20 of 03. Good God. Wow. These tires are from 2003. And they look really good. And this is one of my... Go ahead and laugh. This is one of my favorite colors on these old GM cars. This kind of turquoise color. Man, absolutely beautiful. 2003 tires. They still got plenty of tread on them. Boy, I wonder how they're going to how they're gonna ride. Should probably check the air pressure of these. We need to back this up real quick and uh, get a closer look at it when it's not stuffed in between my other vehicles here. Tires look good, body looks good. It's got some scrapes here and there. And I think this is wax, that is, that's wax. Some of these scrapes are not scrapes at all. It's just, just wax. You know, you send this down for a nice cut and polish, buff it out. This thing actually looked pretty good. It's a slick car and I bought it because this particular, generation a 95 in this particular green brings back some memories for me guys i'm gonna tell you something Ooh, ooh, wow it's hot oh really stupid i did as a kid i had a girlfriend oh this is that's not gonna stay up but i had a girlfriend her dad was in the air force her dad bought her mother this very car in 1995 you gotta remember 94 listen to that in 94, this car did not look like this car, right? In 94, this car was completely different. It was a little teeny tiny kind of square boxy style of car back then, guys. 95 was when things really started changing the automotive world. You ended up with these kind of bug looking cars. That's what people called them. Everybody was like, these cars look like bugs. Yeah, you're right, they did. <laughs> and they were aerodynamic. They were really cool cars, guys, at least in my opinion. I'm gonna roll this window down because it is hot. Well, my ex-wife's mother had a few drinks and went to bed and I was kind of a delinquent. You guys probably could have figured that one out without me telling you, right? I don't think we have air conditioning. Radio? Self engine performance. The radio works. Okay, so my girlfriend's brother had a license I was too young to have a license at the time. In 1995, I would have been 15 years old. But uh, we decided to take the car. We are gonna go for a little joyride. And boy, did we go for a joyride. We ended up um, all the way out in Warner Robins, Georgia. Oh yeah, man. Uh, that was fun. I drove part of the way. It was my first time really driving on the highway any long distance. We stole gasoline the whole way. I know I'm not proud of it, but it's part of the story, guys. Um, back in those days, some of you young people aren't going to remember this because you weren't around, but back in the olden days, you could pull up to a gas pump, you could open it up. Ugh, I said you could open it up. There you go. Good Lord. And, uh, oop. Well, anyway, you could pump your gas first. 
all right? And then they trusted that you were going to pay your bill. After you pumped, you went inside, you paid your, uh, you paid your gas bill and you went on. Well, you know, we stole gas literally the entire way through Atlanta, Georgia, down to Warner Robins, where eventually uh, somebody called the police on us. <laughs> and well, it didn't go very well from there. After the police came out, obviously uh, we all went to jail. My girlfriend was my age, so we both ended up going to Juvenile Hall. I used to remember the name of it. It was called, uh... yeah, I know, you have a pickup truck. I'm really impressed. Anyway, it doesn't matter what the name of it was, but we both went there. I spent about a month there before they shipped me back on a bus to Oklahoma. My girlfriend's brother ended up in jail. And needless to say, the father and the mother were not very happy about this road trip. But thankfully, he was older, so they really made him more responsible for all of this. And we kids just kind of got away with it. So when I saw this same color, the only difference is the one we took was a four-door. Other than that, it had the same weird off-key bumpers and everything. Very bizarre looking car, man. Um, I'm hearing... Oh, no. Uh-oh. 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 That's not good. It's got good pressure on the cooling system. You can hear that it's not running too great. Do you hear that top end noise? And do you see all of this all over the top of the cylinder head? I smell coolant too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, I already know exactly what's wrong with this one. Son of a gun. I kind of expected that this would be a problem. All of these cars, even 94, 93, just go as far back as you'd like to. Um, these were all notorious for head gasket failure. Boy, that engine sounds a little, uh, little rattly, guys. <sighs> That's not good. Now, here's the good thing. These little 2.2s, other than the head gaskets failing, they're actually pretty bulletproof engine, guys. Uh, bulletproof engines. I've had very little issue with these. Somebody put a new water pump on it. I don't know if you can see it down there, but... There is a brand new water pump, a new serpentine belt. Somebody's been chasing problems. A new coolant hose with new uh, worm clamps. Yeah, somebody's been chasing coolant issues with this car. Now uh, the oil actually doesn't look too bad. I'm wondering if this is one we can actually drive. Uh, probably shouldn't. Transmission. Yeah, she's due for service, but honestly, the trans fluid doesn't look that bad either. I'm concerned with the noise at the top end of this thing is making. It's very concerning. I know for a fact we've got a head gasket problem. And this is one of those things, guys. If I can find a cylinder head for this, I know we could take this in and have it, uh, have it machined. Um, that would be the right thing to do. But honestly, you could probably find the cylinder head. You could probably find it on AutoZone or even eBay, like a completely reman one, maybe two or three hundred bucks. That's the way I'd go. I'd do it right, do the cylinder head, get the whole cylinder head kit, and just replace everything. You do that, and these things will last forever. Service the transmission, but I can't very well go out and spend a bunch of money on a car that I'm already into for way more than it's worth. I can't do that without actually taking it for a drive first and making sure that the car runs like it's supposed to um, and at least drives like it's supposed to. I'd hate to put all that money in it and find out we got a bad transmission or something. So we'll put the Carfax report back there. We'll throw this back there. Let's roll down the other window since the air conditioning doesn't function. It's another thing I'd love to try to get figured out. I like this car because it's so original, guys. Uh, glove box door, probably get that on eBay. You got the old school auto reverse, automatic transmission, basic gauge cluster. But look, look at this. You've got, a, how about that? You got yourself an old school sunroof. I wish that would close, but you're curious if it overheats. It fires right up. You even have the cigarette lighter, which doesn't look like it has ever been used. What about the ashtray? No, it's never been used either. What a great old car. A little noisy on the top end though. Wish we could open the trunk. Oh, we have an aftermarket cruise control. Interesting. So aftermarket alarm, aftermarket cruise control. Headlights, brights, signals. I think we need to take this for a ride, guys. Um, 
this one's a little this one's a little sketchy because she's got some problems but i think we need to take it for a ride let me make sure we've got four tires that have air in them i love the look of that sunroof i think that just makes the dang car don't you love this color guys this will clean up very nicely no smoke coming out of the exhaust that's good definitely running a little rough i see little scrapes and scratches all over it uh, it might be easier just is this no that's not scratches guys this is all those are scratches those are scratches yeah maybe it wouldn't hurt oh wow and those on the hood a quick mako paint job would make this car look new again i don't see any dents or anything why don't we take her on the road temperature looks good Ooh. oh boy that engine sounds a little rough it's not knocking brakes feel good power steering is whining shift shifted yes steering is straight shifts through the gears boy that power steering pump is making noise oh yeah yeah that power steering pump is making some serious noise guys she's gonna need a power steering pump too it's one of those things you might as well change it since you're gonna be doing the head gasket anyway pulling the cylinder head you might i have done so many head gaskets and so many cylinder heads on these 2.2 liters it's it's crazy how many i've done guys so this will be a walk in the park for me so far it seems to run great it drives great and it's relatively quiet aside from all the wind noise that you're hearing we're gonna get it up to speed we're gonna hope that it doesn't start overheating let's get her up to 60. there we go and the horn horn works is it cutting out uh-oh <laughs> oh no she started uh she started misfiring no check engine light on i love this this is the first generation of this new body style chevrolet cavalier absolutely love it i'm keeping a close eye on that temperature gauge because it looks like uh, it looked like it was trying to go up there for a minute yeah 100 percent we have a head gasket problem on this car if i was smart i'd turn around now because there may be no coming back if this thing starts overheating i've got no help out here today guys you know what we're gonna do it let's try to make it the full 10 miles i'd be willing to put money on this car having a blown head gasket for a long long time why do you think they kept changing the spark plugs changing the fuel filters they were doing it wrong guys they were doing tune-ups when they had a head gasket problem the whole time i can see how it could be confusing because the car is not overheating it's running down the road pretty good but there are I'm, I'm doing 70 right now guys there are occasions where it starts bucking surging you can definitely feel a misfire going on so i can see how a shop that has no experience with these older engines uh, they probably thought it was just tune-up related i don't think the head gasket is blown too badly um, but it's definitely got some coolant getting in there and messing up the uh, ability for this thing to fire on all cylinders all the time but with that said like i said guys i'm cruising 70 miles an hour down the highway here and she's not overheating she's running and driving relatively well considering and it's hard to beat what i paid for this car before transportation costs and associated fees it was actually a steal of a deal for a low mileage original 95 was the first year of this body style guys and this color is absolutely iconic well we made it power locks but manual windows right who what i, I don't know let's pop the hood i'm curious if the uh, cooling fans are going to come up check out the detail in this fabric the gray with the little turquoise dots in it the seats are the same way guys take a look at that how beautiful is that the interior of this car is actually in really nice condition so is the exterior aside from a bunch of scrapes and scratches presumably from being parked for many many years the scratches on this hood do not all go the same way 
it looks like somebody threw a bunch of boxes and stuff on this car oh yeah you can you can hear tap it away this thing is just begging for oh you can smell that coolant boy Woo! this thing is absolutely begging for a new cylinder head but listen to her. Aside from the ticking, it's actually running really well. Check the oil again. I don't see any foam. Oh, she's spitting oil. That's fine. A little bit of blow by there. But if you look down here, where these things typically blow the head gasket at is right here on this corner. If I can get you guys down there. Right there. Right there. That is where they blow. They typically start leaking. You can see a trail where it's been leaking, but now it's leaking out of the bolts as well. The head bolts are leaking, so we're going to need new head bolts, a complete head set, and we're going to need a, a, a reman cylinder head. There's not too much pressure on the cooling system. Honestly, this doesn't concern me that much. I'd love if the cooling fan kicked on. That would make me feel a little bit better. Somebody's also replaced that lower radiator hose as well. And there's that shiny new water pump right there. Somebody's done quite a bit of work. That power steering pump is making some noise. I'm a little curious. Does it have fluid? Yeah, it does. Fresh, clean fluid. So we're looking at a, we're looking at probably needing a pump. Although now it seems to be pretty quiet. Not bad, not bad. Let's see if we can get into the trunk. Let's check the temperature too. The temperature is not hot yet, but I was I was really hoping we'd hear a cooling fan kick in by now. I got to pull this off. This is in my way. It's making it very difficult to see. Oh, this is going to be one of those that peels off in a. In sections, huh? Oh, these are always fun. Went ahead and shut it off, which is risky. I don't have my booster pack or anything with me at all. This is one that would be a prime candidate for a Mako paint job. This thing is in just such good condition. The trunk is clean. I assume we got a spare. Oh, we got a jack. We got the jack handle, a spare tire. It looks like it's never touched the ground. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is just begging for an El Cheapo, you know, $500 Mako paint job, and then a nice interior detail from Brian at the Auto Spa. Cylinder head, glove box, that would be nice. Air conditioning, getting the AC working would be awesome. Let's check the temperature. It didn't seem like the temp was going up, but the cooling fan was not coming on, and the car is just sitting here idling. It's a little concerning. And do we have a check engine light? Yes, we do. Just so you guys can see, check engine light is right there in the corner. And when you start it, it does not come on. There are no warning lights, not even an airbag light. But that temperature gauge sure looks like she's creeping up, doesn't she? Let's see if we can get a radio station to come on. There we go. There we go. All right, all right, we got some we got some radio work in here, guys. And we have this little lid right here. And this needs to go back some. There we go. It's already looking better. The big thing with these cars is typically the dashboard disintegrates, guys. It falls apart. That piece up there, all of this, the center stack right here falls to pieces. I mean, these cars just notoriously fall apart. But this one is still nice and soft which tells me it probably spent a lot of time in the garage holding up boxes. So we know it runs and drives. It actually runs great. We also note that head gasket is shot. Here's another great thing about the car. These are some pretty crazy bumps right here. Big ones. The car is quiet. Handles the bumps with ease and grace. There's that power steering one. Yeah, she needs a power steering pump. That temperature gauge still creeping up. I am thinking we may have a failure with the cooling fan. That's something I'll double check when we get back to the house, but hopefully as we start running down the road here, getting some speed up, this engine cools down some. Uh, I don't know, guys. She's not looking like she's cooling down. Yes, yeah, she is. There we go. All right. All right, look, you guys can see out the window a whole lot better now. She's cooling down. She's running and driving great. I really don't know what else you could ask for from a car that was only like $425. Other than, does the cruise control work? Let's try it. I'm going to get it. We're at 60. Let me hold it. And 
Nope. Cruise control does not work. That's a shame. Aside from that, guys, she's a decent little car. A cheap grocery getter, an A to B. Get some air conditioning in this thing. It'd be a whole lot nicer to drive. Guys, we're almost back to town. And I want you to see, temperature is still looking good. I am really surprised. We're cruising right about 70 miles an hour. And we've got no overheating issues. I turned the heater on and it's got nice hot heat. Unfortunately, no air conditioning. You know, as soon as we get back to the house though, we're gonna find out if that cooling fan is coming on. And we're also gonna try to throw a little bit of Freon into the AC to see if we can get some nice cold air conditioning coming out of these vents. I would imagine that many of you watching this video probably had one of these cars. If not, you were driven around to school and back in one of these cars, two door, four door variant, whatever. You know the old Chevy Cavalier. They weren't exactly known to be the most reliable or greatest vehicles, but I'm telling you, there's something about these cars I have just always, always loved. All right, why don't we check the oil real quick? I already wiped it off with a rag. Let's just see what it looks like. And it's, it's actually good. Yeah, it's not milky or anything. And it's right in the safe zone. So this thing, although it looks pretty bad on the outside, I mean, look at all that corrosion. That's all coolant that's been bubbling out of the head bolts. I, I know that it looks bad. I wouldn't take this thing on any long trips right now, guys. Uh, but it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. The dang thing still runs and drives pretty dang good for a car with a head gasket problem. All right, it's got no Freon in it at all. We're gonna try to shoot some in. We're gonna cross our fingers that just a quick recharge might, uh, you know, might bring her back to life. She's probably not gonna hold much more than that till we turn on the AC. The good news is, I don't hear it shooting out anywhere yet. Yeah, that's as, that's as good as she's gonna get. Let's go ahead and fire it back up. I am absolutely in love with this little car. I really am. All right, air conditioning. Let's kick on the AC. Oh, did it die? It died. Oh. Oh, don't tell me the compressor clutch is bad. Come on. Come on, come on. There we go. That clutch made a horrific noise when it first kicked on. Cooling fans are running, so we know the cooling fans work. Air compressor is on. Just shoot a little more Freon into this bad boy until it says full. And uh, we're gonna cross our fingers that we got some cold air conditioning coming out of those vents. According to this gauge, she's good and filled. This says it's supposed to take approximately 0.68 kilograms, which is what, one and a half pounds? Yeah, one and a half pounds, good Lord. We only put, we didn't even put 12 ounces in it, guys. There's still a bit in there, so maybe the system still had some in it. Let's check and see if the air conditioning is working. I don't expect that it's gonna be nice and cold, but, well, actually, to my surprise, wow, it is, it is cold, yes. I bet if we rev it up a little bit. Oh yeah, you gotta remember four cylinder guys, especially 1995. Cooling fans on, running nicely. Definitely not as cold as you would want it to be though, for sure, especially considering that it's on recirculate right now. It's definitely cool, but this is not. That's getting, wait, 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 wait. There we go, she's getting much better. Oh, that's, oh yeah, that is so much better. Yes, yes, yes. That, that I could deal with. That I could deal with. All right, let's check the, uh, the gauge one more time. I'm really surprised it didn't hold at least a can, guys. That is, that is kind of surprising. I'm tempted to put some more in it. Then again, maybe we shouldn't. Let's go ahead and just leave it where it is. And we're gonna shut the AC off and let it idle. And we're gonna come back here in just a moment and see if without air conditioning, that cooling fan will kick on on it. So that feels good, that really does. That feels nice. 
turn it off boy that engine's the top end just sounds so bad this is an old school push rod engine guys it's got lifters and yeah they definitely don't sound very happy well i've left her sitting here idling for a while you can see the temperature is creeping up very slowly top end of this engine just sounds boy that sounds bad that just sounds real bad yeah, you can sure hear it. It's coming from right over here. And she sounds a little rough, guys. She definitely sounds a little rough. I think this is one that may be worth putting a little money into fixing. I'm sure the grounds are still attached properly. Everything in here really looks good, guys. Charged up battery. I mean, this thing literally... $425 granted all the auction fees and that transportation costs over a thousand dollars I know that's crazy but the fact is you could have picked this up from wherever I, I don't remember where I bought it from Pennsylvania or, or wherever it came from you could have literally picked this up in that location for $425 it was there it was for sale the whole world could have bid on it and here we are nobody wants these cars anymore guys I don't understand why they take me back to, in my opinion, a better time, a better place. I don't know. Makes me feel a little bit younger when I come out to my, my shop here and I see all of these old school. There's the cooling fan, I think. No? I see all these old school cars, man. You know, all, Just all these weird, obsolete things that used to be all over the place when I was a kid. And they're all sitting on my property. It feels good and it just, it makes me happy. Guys, I think we're going to wrap it up for this video. It runs, it drives, it did 10 miles. I think I'm gonna start shopping around for some parts to replace the cylinder head. And we'll come back in another video and try to put this car back together. Do me a favor, if you enjoyed today's video, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.